Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I am going to explain you a very important concept related to your PMP or CAPM exam. You must have seen the questions based on the network diagram uh, to find the critical path or to calculate the total float or free float of a given activity. So I have uh, created three videos. In the first part of the video, I am going to explain you how to calculate total float without even calculating a late start, late finish or early start or early finish of the activities. Then the second part of the video is completely based on how to calculate late start, late finish, early start and early finish for activities. And in the third part, I have explained how to calculate free float of a given activity as well as how to calculate total float if the uh, late start, late finish and early start and early finish have been known already. So let's get started. I hope that you like this video. So as you can see, this is the question that we are going to solve. In this question, network diagram for a project is given and they have asked to calculate the total float and the free float for activity E. So now let's see how to calculate these. So this is the question. I have written it like this. It's getting started, this project. Then the activity A, it's going to take one day to complete. So in the bracket, I have mentioned all the days just like the question now our first question was to calculate the total float so if in your capm or pmp exam you are getting the question to calculate the total float you don't have to calculate the early start early finish or the late start or late finish all you have to do you have to calculate the duration of each path first so first let's see how many paths are possible to start this activity and make this activity completed. So one, we can go through this A to B, B to C, C to F, F to G and G to I. So I'm writing here path. So my first possible path is a, B, C, F, G and I. Now second possibility could be A to B, B to C, C to F, F to H and then H to I. So H I. Now the third path could be instead of going upward, I can now this time try to go from here to D. So A to D, then E, then F, then G, and then I. Similarly, one more path is possible, which is a, D, E, F, H and I. So first you have to write down all the paths. Now we have to calculate the duration of each path. So to calculate the duration, you know that how many days or how many hours these activities are going to complete it it is mentioned here here so to calculate the duration we just have to add the number of days each of this activity is taking to complete so for this it's one plus four plus six plus five plus seven plus 2 which will give you your duration as 25 similarly you will calculate for this part it will come as 21 20 and 16 now you know that the longest duration is the, our critical path so now you know that this 
A, B, C, F, G, I is your critical path because it has the longest duration as 25. So now to calculate the total float, you need to use your critical path duration and you have to subtract all the actual durations of this path, which mean your critical path duration is 25 minus this path is again a critical path. So it's zero. Then critical path duration again minus this path has a duration of 21 will give you four. Then again, critical path is 25. This path has duration 20. Will give you 5. And again, critical path duration minus this path has duration of 16 days. So you have your 9 days. Now, from here, which number is the largest one is going to be your total float for this project. So here this 9 is going to be total float for this project.